Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Chi, and I'm a PhD candidate from the University of Texas at San Antonio. Today, I'll talk about our work, Near Ultrasound Inaudible Trojan, New It, uh, Exploring Your Speaker to Attack Your Microphone. This work is co-authored by my supervisor, Dr. Chen, over there, uh, from UTSA also, and uh, Dr. Xu from UCCS. In recent years, we've seen technology develop to give us power to our voices to control IoT devices. This convenience is made possible by the Voice Controllable System, aka VCS. Popular VCS are like Siri, Alexa, Google Assistant, and Cortana. A VCS works by recording an audio signal with a microphone, then process, detect, and classify the signal using speech recognition system. Recent research found that VCS suffer a lot of security concerns. Then let's talk about our motivation for new it. Uh, a recent work, Dolphin Attack, has achieved inaudible attack against VCS. So let's recall Dolphin Attack's methodology. It first used double sideband amplitude modulation, aka DSPAM, to modulate the voice command to ultrasonic frequency range to make it inaudible. Then, it exploited microphone's nonlinearity to demodulate the ultrasound signal into audible range, thus fooling the VCS to believe it's a legit command. Dolphin attack is inaudible, but it requires the attacker to present the ultrasonic transducer in victim's vicinity in a line of sight manner. So here's a question. Is it possible to remotely wage dolphin attack so that the attacker can deploy inaudible sound clip in victim device like a Trojan horse virus? Thus, the attacker can use the victim's own speaker to attack their own microphones. So our solution to this is Nuit attack. Um, the Nuit presents as an inaudible sound clip, which will be played on victim device. The Nuit uses victim's own speaker to attack his own microphone. Nuit has two instances, Nuit 1 and Nuit 2. The Nuit 1 uses victim's speaker to attack his microphone on the same device. So let's watch the video. Yeah, the first command is ask Siri to speak at 6% to mute Siri's response to make it, this attack totally silent. And the second command is to ask Siri to open the door. Yep, then the victim's smart lock is gonna be unlocked. Okay. The second instance of new it attack is new two attack. The new two exploit the victim speaker to attack microphone on a different device. For example, this one. We embed the new signal into our website. So when the victim's browsing website, his microphone nearby is going to be attacked. And we use the same open the door command. Okay, so let's talk about the contribution of our work. The new, first, the new attack is the first attack that is both inaudible and remote. Secondly, we have theor theoretical innovation. We're the first to explore, or uh, to investigate SSBAM, the single sideband amplitude modulation, um, nonlinear demodulation. Uh, thirdly, uh, we propose a single factor software-based defense. Okay, then let's take a look at the new attack implementation. We assume that the attacker can access victim's voice print for authentication. Then, the step one is to prepare and recall malicious voice command. We find that the attack command must be at least six kHz to be recognizable by VCS. Then, we have to make sure the action command must be less than 0.77 seconds, which is the reaction time window. Okay, so what is reaction time window? As you can see, this figure shows the timeline of how Siri reacts to voice command. 
You can see in this figure, first, the Siri is going to hear the activation keyword. Actually, it's his Siri, right? Then, um, yeah, then it takes less than one second for the iPhone, for Siri to react to it. Finally, it will mute its speaker in order to hear this, uh, the user very clearly. Therefore, we have to really fit our action command, for example, open the door within this really short reaction time window. Okay, then thirdly, for the silent response, uh, we should uh, always uh, put this um, speak 6% as the first command before your real attack command. But uh, the silent response is for iPhone only because for other operating system, uh, the VCS response volume is same as medium volume. So if you mute the um, VCS response volume, you, your attack is not gonna be successful. So the second step for the uh, implementation is to modulate input audio file to ensure inaudibility. Our goal is to modulate voice command into passband between 16 kHz to 22 kHz. That is because above 16 kHz, human ears are not sensitive to the acoustic signal. And the commercial off-the-shelf speaker usually can only generate signal below 22 kHz. Okay, here's a question. So what modulation scheme should we use? Let's try the DSBM using Dolphin Attack. But the DSBM's bandwidth is too wide. It's at least 12 kHz. So if you use DSBM, you will have some audible noise leakage. So it cannot be inaudible totally. So that's why to narrow down the passband bandwidth, we need to use SBAM, the single sideband amplitude modulation. The SBAM has two variations. The first is upper sideband band, um, amplitude modulation, USBAM. And the second is LSBN, which is lower sideband amplitude modulation. If the attacker choose to use USBN, he must make the carrier frequency at 16 kHz to fit it perfectly in uh, 16 Hz to 22 kHz. If the attacker choose to use LSBM, he or she should make sure the carrier frequency is at uh, 22 kHz. Okay, then let's talk about the step three of the attack implementation to remotely deliver the attack signal to the target device. This can be done by embedding the new signal into online audio or website app like YouTube, or Spotify, and we can trick the victim to play the attack signal through social engineering. Okay, so much. Uh, about how to implement the, the NUIT. So let's talk about after the NUIT is received by the microphone, how the microphone is going to demodulate the NUIT signal non-linearly. So this is the spectrum of the USB and the LSB AM modulated signal. Then after experience the microphone and this uh, amplifier, the non-linearity will demodulate this NUIT signal to baseband signal as you can see in this uh, red little circle. Then this signal will survive the lower passband filter because we will have a cutoff frequency at 20 kHz. Then the baseband signal is going to contribute to uh, activate the voice controllable system. We conduct many experiments to evaluate e the effectiveness of new attack. So we can see um, uh, this table is, um, uh, in this table we show the devices which are vulnerable to NUIT 1 or NUIT 2 attack. We can see in this table that at top of the table, these devices are vulnerable to both NUIT 1 and NUIT 2 attack. While this device listed down there are only vulnerable to NUIT 2 attack. This means NUIT 2 has a broader impact uh, than new to one attack. And know that only iPhone 10, 10R, and 8 can suffer silent response new to one attack. This is because only Siri 
separates uh, VCS re response volume from system medium volume, while other operating systems like Android or Windows doesn't. Okay, in this table, we actually test uh, the attack range for new to two attack. We can see that these are speakers, for example, uh, these are powerful speakers. For example, the vehicle audio system speaker, smart home speaker, and uh, the laptop speaker. With this powerful speaker, we really can achieve longer attack distance. However, with this low power speaker, for example, speaker from these mobile devices, we can only achieve like centimeter level shorter attack range. We also evaluated other factors. For example, the impact of different language, Chinese, English, Spanish, and we are also in, uh, uh, evaluating the impact of the audio format, for example, uh, the WAV format, the MP3, and the, we impact the, uh, the level of background noise, impact of uh, directionality, and please refer to our paper for detailed experimental procedure and result. We also pro propose that novel defense mechanism. The basic idea is to verify if the baseband command is shadowed from the high frequency range. To verify this, we use a low pass filter and a high pass filter to field out the new signal separately. And the uh, lower frequency range is called uh, SP and the high frequency component is called SP. Then we use a correlation to check the similarity between SP and the SP squared. If this uh, correlation coefficient, the big R, is greater than a certain threshold, then we think there is an attack. Otherwise, we think there's no attack and then we verify the next window. And we admit that Newit has some limitation. For example, the Newit is uh, not uh, totally inaudible to some young kid. And also, um, Newit 1 can only uh, achieve a silent attack in Siri, and Newit 2 uh, distance is shorter if the attacker exploits a mobile device speaker. Okay, here's a conclusion. Uh, we propose a new attack against a VCS. It's called Newit. Newit is both remote and inaudible, and Newit has two variations, Newit 1 and Newit 2. And we use a single sideband amplitude modulation to modulate a baseband signal to near ultrasound frequency range to overcome the audible leakage. Thank you so much for your attention, and uh, if you have any more questions, please contact us. Thank you.